brothers? Have you welcomed each other? Yes. Wonderful. All right. I know this is definitely not for me. It's extremely tall. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yours. Very good. Good thinking, huh? Should be taller, I think. <laughs> Pastor Kelly is very tall. Okay, all settled. Awesome. Pastor Joe is over in KL Church taking the service there. And today we have our Pastor or Reverend Kelly Yap, who is also a friend of ours. <laughs> And, oh, before we do that, I just want to welcome all the Pakistani people who are here. Welcome. If you are first time here, Pastor Kasif is here as well with his wife, Nancy. Sister Nancy, welcome. And then we have a very special lady in the midst of us. We've got a Vietnamese pastor here. And it's a lady pastor. Pastor Deborah. Can you stand, Pastor Deborah? Let's welcome her. Hey, awesome. She was uh, Pastor Joe's interpreter and took uh, Pastor Joe to an, an Anol as well as Sunita, the last trip they had were at Hanoi. And God bless you, huh? She's here for a conference and she's uh, joining us this week and next week as well. Welcome, Pastor Deborah. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Okay, let me just introduce the speaker right now. Thank you, musician singers. But can you stay up here for a moment? Wasn't, isn't there? Don't you think they're gorgeous? Okay, let's just stay there as I uh, introduce Pastor Kelly. I guess maybe some of you would have heard uh, us introduce him years ago when he came. Huh? I don't, uh, not had an opportunity to invite him back again, but he's has been a dear friend of ours from Bible College. We graduated from... There's so many things that we have in common, really. Huh? First of all, we all graduated from the same Bible College. Pastor Kelly, his wife, Swen, myself and Pastor Joe. Okay, Pastor Joe Sr., his middler and his wife, Swen, and myself, we were uh, freshmen. And uh, another thing that is common, of course, we met our partners in Bible college. That second thing. Third thing, we got married on the same day. <laughs> Actually, I told Pastor I want to search one of the old photos and uh, put it up. I didn't have time to do it. We had a double wedding. Wow, never heard of a double wedding uh, at Calvary Church And Pastor Prince Gunaratnam uh, married us Two couples because we got married right after our graduation And we didn't want our friends to leave And some of them uh, were from other countries We didn't want them to leave and miss our wedding So we decided to marry one day after our graduation So we decided since we both of us are, you know uh, Actually we started courting as well at the same time <laughs> we all got together with our partners almost the same year or the same uh, same time, and and uh, he has been he and Swen has gone to, I think you pioneered, isn't it, Pastor Kelly? Uh, Kelly, you pioneered Gospel Assembly, right? And they have been they planted they pioneered the church, they planted this church, and uh, they have been pastors for over this church for like years. Thank God for the faithfulness of this man, and they have a great church uh, at Damansara there. And God is doing great things through them. And so today it's an honor and a privilege for me to invite Reverend Kelly up, up to the platform here. Shall we all welcome him? Hallelujah. Praise God. Up to you. Praise God. <clears throat> I, want to, <laughs> I want to extend my thanks to your pastor, Joe and Stella, for their kind invitation for me to come and share. I, I've been visiting your church a long, long time ago. I think it was back the other side. And of course, also in uh, the Kera area, I, I've shared there. And then after that, over a, quite a number of years. I think I didn't see Pastor Joe and he didn't see me, but we just met recently over a, a wedding and uh, they said, why don't you come and share? I said, okay, I might, might as well come. And uh, it's, it's great to see your church growing. God is doing great thing, things in your midst and it's also wonderful to see children. Did you know that children speaks about life in the church? If you go to a lot of churches, there are no more children. And there are a lot of churches who have got no more youths. You've got 
kids, you got youths, you got dads, you got mom. It's a complete church. You are doing well. Praise God. Amen. Today, let's, let's go to the Word of God. Today, I'd like to share with you 10 pointers how to be a good father. I know some of you, you've got lots of years and experience as a father, but it's good to be reminded how to be a good father, okay? How to be a good father. Let's look to God in prayer. Father, thank you for this service. Thank you for your wonderful presence in our midst. Thank you, Lord, for the excitement. Lord, when we are in your midst and your presence is here, surely there's a good reason for all of us to be excited. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you come and not your word as we listen to all these pointers. May we, dear God, as a father, a good father, may we get even better for your glory. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, it's easy, if I may say, it's easy to become a father. But the question is, are you a good father? Are you a good father? You want to see and know and understand what it takes to be one. If you're already a good father, you can be better. Point number one. Next slide. Okay. How to be a good father? Point number one. You've got to love your wife. Say amen. amen. Love your wife. Okay. Your children are watching you how you treat your wife, dear mother. They watch you, they learn from you, and they form their concept of marriage from you. You are creating a pattern and a blueprint of marriage for your children, okay? especially the boys. When you disrespect your wife, your son later, when he grows up, when he gets married, he'll do the same to his wife. When you verbally, physically abuse your wife, your son will, will watch, and later, you know, not only that, your daughter, she will expect her husband to abuse and physically abuse her. So you must watch yourself. If you want to be a good dad, you must not do all those things. So as a dad, love and respect your wife. Love your mother. And your son will one day become a good father and a good, and, and a good husband. When you learn to honor your wife, your daughter will never choose one who disrespect, disrespects her. Okay? So your daughter is watching. And if you are a good dad, okay, she will want to look for a dad who is just like you. One who will honor her, respect her, and never ever physically abuse her. Okay? Cherish your wife, their mother, and they will carry that model for life. Ephesians 5.28, if you look at Ephesians 5.28, the scripture there, Ephesians 5.28 says, So husbands ought also to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. How to be a good father? Point number one. Love your wife. And what say you? Amen? Number two. Next slide. Now all these are all localized pictures. Huh? Cross-cultural marriage. Children mixed. Okay, number two. To be a good father, do not expect perfect children. Very important. There are no perfect fathers. Amen? And likewise, if you are not perfect, don't expect your children to be perfect. If you expect them to be perfect, you put a lot of stress, a lot of pressure on them. So don't expect perfect children. Do not expect your children to be perfect. Do not expect them to meet your expectations. Sometimes as a dad, our own expectations are not met, so we, we expect our children to meet our expectations. We transfer our stress, our problems, our needs to them. Don't do that. Okay? Do not expect them to be what you, you, you want them to be. That means, if I cannot, you better do better than me. That's not good. Okay? To many fathers, they try to live their lives through their, through their children. They want their sons to succeed where they could not. They want their daughters to marry into riches and security where they have not. Let your son and your daughter be who they are. Choose who they want to marry. If they are happy, you are blessed. Don't put stress on them. Every child is different. They are not a clone of you. They, are, they have their own destiny. They are different from you. Naturally, children do make mistakes. They break things when they are small. They can do poorly. But they are not going to do poorly forever. Okay? They will fail. But they learn from their mistakes. They are not perfect. Neither are you when you are young as a, uh, in those days. And now as a father too, you are not perfect. So your children will make mistakes. But they will learn from it. They will get, get better. Give them a chance. Okay? Accept your children for who they are. Amen? Amen? For who they are. Don't criticize them. Don't find fault. If they make a mistake, still encourage them, love them, acknowledge and love them for who they are. Colossians 3.21, the scripture text there. Fathers, do not make your children resentful or they will become discouraged. Have you ever discovered that your children can get, can get discouraged? Don't discourage them. 
lest they become resentful. How to be a good father? Number two, do not expect perfect children. They are getting better, but they're not perfect. Okay. Number three, third slide. This is a good one. <clears throat> Enjoy your children. Psalms 127 verse 3 says, Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Children are a blessing. Children are never a burden. They are never meant to be avoided. They are not meant to be ignored or enjoyed. They are meant to be enjoyed. If you don't love children, you want to ignore them, you want to give them time and attention, then why bring them into the world? But the Bible says they are a gift. So when you bring them into the world, you've got to enjoy them. They are a blessing from God. They are like quivers, you know quivers? Or even arrows in your, in, when, you, when, you, when you wear a hair, there are quivers there. All the children that you have are quivers on your crown, okay? So children, enjoy them. Spend time with them. Have fun with them. Share with them your life. Spend good quality time with them. And how do you do that? Enjoy yourself being a father and, and expect them to enjoy themselves when they are with you. Get on the ground, get dirty, roll on the ground with them. When I was a dad, I used to spend a lot of time with my children. I, I really get dirty with them and I, I grab them, I throw them on the bed, I wrestle with them and they love all that. But of course, now they are bigger, they don't expect that. Lah. Okay? So you, t- you move with times. But nonetheless, even your, your, your sons and daughters, when they are older, even when they are married, they will still recognize that you are, you are still their dad. Okay, so you, you, you need to adapt and adjust, but when they are young, that's the best time of their life. Enjoy yourself. Get down on the ground and roll with them. Laugh, play. Give them a good, a good memory of what dad is. And when they grow up, when they get married, they will say, oh, my dad is a fun guy. Don't you like that? Dads are meant to be fun guys. So enjoy your children. Okay, how to be a good father number three? Enjoy your children. When they grow up, they will leave the nest. Okay, a lot of parents who are old now, they say, oh, yeah. The house is so quiet. No more children. Let's have another one. But the factory is already closed. <laughs> number four. Okay. How to be a good father? Number four. Next slide. Listen to your children. Okay. Give them undivided attention. That's very important. Give them undivided attention. Undivided attention means not one eye on Astro, the other eye on your children. You need to be always committed. Undivided ent- attention. When they have a problem, when they are worried, your children, when they are sad, when they are lonely, they don't need cartoons, they don't need Mickey Mouse, they don't need video games, uh, what box, whatever, okay, best, they don't need Facebook, lah, best friends, they need you, they need dad. Because as far as they are concerned, in their eyes, you are their dad, you are Superman. Very important. If your parents, if, if, if you as a parent, your, your, your children come to you and they talk to you, they share their needs with you, it talks a lot. You are their friend. You are, you are someone that they trust. They can share their needs with. You are their super dad. Okay? Get involved. Know what is going on in their life every day. It, listen to them. Even when your children are not talking, they are actually speaking volumes. You can observe their, their, their behavior, okay? their conduct. It tells on them. Okay? So you need to be sensitive as a father. Be the father they, they, they can come to and say anything on their mind when they are young. Okay? And then when they grow older, when their problems and their needs get bigger, they will still come to you. And don't you like that? Because nowadays we are so uh, detached from our children, especially when they are big, when they got problems, they got needs, they don't come to us. You know why? Because it was not built when it was young. Allow your children to come to you when they are young and talk to you. When they are older, when their needs and problems get bigger, they will still come to you and talk to you. And that's where you can give them their wise counsel. Okay? So listen to your children. Proverbs 1.5, it says, A wise man will hear... And increase in learning. And so when your experience and your wisdom increase, when you transmit this to your children and help them and counsel them, not only will they be blessed, but you also increase your wisdom and your experience. You become a better dad day by day. How to be a good father? Number four, listen to your children. God made us with two ears and one mouth. Why? Because God wants us to speak twice as much and listen twice as much and speak less. Okay? Two ears, one mouth. Okay, number five. Next slide. Number five, provide for your children. How to be a good dad? Provide for your children. First Timothy 5 8. But if anyone does not provide for his son, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an, uh, than an unbeliever. Now listen, 
Every lost and unbelieving believing father provides for their families. If you, if you go out into the world, you see the non-believers, they also love and care for their family and, and their children. If the non-believers can do that, how much more you and I, if you are a Christian, you should do better than them. Because we have got God on our side. So be a good provider, okay? Think about their needs. I know dad and mom, the, the dad and, 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 my, and my mom that I used to have, they are now with the Lord. But when, when I was young, I, I, I see in them the, the, the demonstration of leadership and love. If there's food on the table, if they have not eaten and there's not enough to go around, they always make sure that their children are fed first. Dad and mom always eat last. And have you ever discovered that when it comes to the chicken, if there's one chicken on the table, okay, uh, the, 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 in the olden days, okay, the, the two drumsticks are given to dad and mom. But in my household, okay, the drumsticks are always given to the children. Dad and mom will eat probably the neck and the tail and the bishop's nose. And whatever, okay? Okay? They give the best to the children. And that's, that's the kind of dad and mom I had when I was young. Okay? And uh, today I do the same for my children. Why? Because I learned from him. I give the best to my children. So provide for your children. Now, uh, when it comes to providing for your children, it must be a balance. Okay? There are some parents who love their children to bits. Okay? They spoil them. When you give too much, it's a problem. When you don't give enough, it's also a problem. Strike the balance. Okay? You must also teach your children to, how to uh, uh, survive on their own, to earn their own keep. Okay? Now, my son expects a lot from me. But there are times I tell him, uh, you pay your own bills. Okay? When you can't, I'll help you. But other than that, if you're working now, pay your own bills. Only when you're seriously in financial uh, need, you can come to me, I'll help you. And probably once in a while, I'll lend you, you better pay back. Why do I do that? It's because I want him to be responsible. Okay. Strike a balance, okay? So how to be a good father? Okay. Provide for your children. Okay. Number six. 45 minutes, so I'm going fast. Okay. Train your children. Train your children. Ephesians 6.4. Ephesians 6.4, it says, And fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. There are a lot of parents who are, what do you call, there are a lot of dads who are, what, what do you call them? They are like, maybe they got bad experiences when they grow up. And so, and so now that they are a dad, they kind of like, they ill-treat their sons and their daughters and make life hard for them and provoke them. Have you ever seen some dads and, and mom? They, they like to provoke their children. And uh, children don't like to go home. Why? Because my dad always provokes me. Are you the kind of dad? The Bible says don't provoke your children to anger. Even children can get upset. Don't provoke them. Teach and train your children to respect authority. Exert authority. Train them to respect that. When your children are exposed to training in terms of authority in the house, okay, you are the boss. When I say so, listen and follow in a good way. They will also respect authority when they are at school. And later when they are in the world, they also learn to respect authority. When you don't show the, uh, the standard, when you, when you don't maintain the standard, your children also, when they grow up, when they go into the world, they will not respect authority. They will break the rules and the law. And uh, we live in a very tough world. Rules are meant to be obeyed, not meant to be bent. And you, when your children are capable and they have learned all these basics okay, in the home to respect the rules and the law and to obey, it helps them a lot. Okay? Lawbreakers okay, always end up in jail. Correct? Okay? And uh, you wouldn't want to have, have uh, your loved ones ending up in, in some of the lockups in Malaysia. Why? Because a lot of people who go into a lockup never ever come out. That's Malaysia, right? Okay. So be sure that your children respect authority. It's learnt in the home. Your, your children are going to test you. When they're young, they will test you. They're going to see how much they can get away with. It. They will push the, 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 the limit. Okay. They're going to see whether you as a dad, when it comes to instruction, respect authority, whether you really exert authority, whether you really mean what you say or you're just acting it out. But when you're firm and you, and you set a godly standard for them, they will respect that rule. But each time you stray away from godly standards and instruction, you allow them to get away, get away with it. Every time you back down from godly instruction, you will draw the line further away from God's standards. God's standards are learned from you when you implement them in the home. How to be a good father? Number six, train your children. Be the example you should be. Number seven, 
Number seven, next slide. I like the pictures there. Very Asian. Huh? Okay. Pray for yourself. This is, this is, is, a, is a better picture. It's, it's a Western model. First Chronicles 16.11. It says, Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face continually. Okay. You don't have all the answers to questions. Children, sons, daughters, ask a lot of questions. Most of the time you have the answers. But there will be times you are caught, you don't have the answers. And when you don't have the answers, say, I don't know. That's a good question. But why don't you wait for me and I'll do some research and I'll find out and I'll get back to you. Okay? That's the way you respond. And so you don't have all the answers. You can't solve all their problems all the time. But you will try your best. And that's where as they ask you questions, they learn and you grow. You also learn together with them. You, you don't have all the wisdom. And so the best thing that you can do is when they are not around, you go to God and pray. Ask God to help you. Dads need to pray. Pray for yourself. Lay hands on yourself and say, God, I'm a dad. It's a great responsibility. And I won't, be, I won't be around all the time for my children, but at least now when they're young, help me that I can lead them. Lord, I pray for strength. I pray for direction. I pray for wisdom. That they will see me, uh, what kind of dad I should be. And you, you model your, 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 your life as like God. The best father that we have is our Heavenly Father. And so our life as a dad should be patterned after our Heavenly Father. Okay? Without God's help, you can never be the father that God wants you to be. You need help. You can't do it yourself. Ask God, seek God, and He will help you and He will make you a better dad. Sometimes as a dad, you don't have to really do much. But when the favor and the anointing of God is upon your life, your children will see, my dad is a man of God. And he leads by example. His love. Okay? And who he is, for what he is, I respect him because he's a man of God. Okay? So how to be a good dad? Pray for yourself. Pray for your children, yes, but also pray for yourself. Next point, number eight, slide number eight. Pray for your children. Psalms 55 verse 17. It says, Evening and morning and noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Who hears my voice? God. We have a God who answers prayer. Amen? Okay? When you pray to Him day, morning, afternoon, night, He will hear. You, you, you cannot be with your children all the time. In fact, they are more energetic than you. But when you cannot be with them, God can. You cannot protect your children wherever they go. You can't be playing detective or policeman, can you? And so there are a lot of places that they go to, you can't be there to protect them, but God can. You can teach your children right and wrong. But you cannot be there when they are tested. They have to cross the bridge themselves. When they are challenged, when it comes to trials, testings, temptation, you cannot be there to cover for them. But God can. And that's why it's important to pray for your children. Bring them before God. Ask God to do for them what you cannot do. God, there are times I'm limited. My hands are short, but the Bible says God's hands are never too short. He can cover for you. Okay? As parents, we are not perfect. We do make mistakes. And uh, if we get to do it all over again, I think we will be a better father. Some of you as dads, you are here. You have been a dad for many years. I'm sure sometimes when you humble yourself before God and you, and you pray, you say, God, if ever I get a chance to be a dad again, turn back the time. I'll do it a different way. Correct or not? <laughs> you look back and there are a lot of regrets. Forget about the regrets. I've learned one thing about this. When you make a mistake or when you sin against God, you confess your sin to God. God wipes it clean, it's gone. Okay? But how come you still remember the things that you have done wrong? Because we are human. We are not like God. Okay? And our conscience still troubles us. And so it takes sometimes, uh, th- sometimes days, sometimes months or weeks or months for you to actually uh, feel good inside you. Your spirit is troubled. Okay? But... The scripture says when God says He forgives, He cleanses, He forgives, he, he cleanses. And so don't let your troubled past follow you. When God says He forgives, He cleanses, He buries them in the, in, the, in the lake of forgetfulness, He doesn't remember them. That's what God is. You are not God. God is God. He's our best Father. And so when you make mistakes, okay, when you confess to God as a parent, uh, God as a parent, I've done mistakes, God forgives you. So you don't have to go back and do it all over again, okay? In fact, some, I know of some uh, dads, okay, uh, they said, I asked them, would you like to get married again if ever you get a chance to get married again? Oh, 
If ever I get a chance to remarry again, I wouldn't want to. It's too much of a challenge, too much of a hassle. Maybe they are tired, huh? or maybe they're getting old. Yeah, it's a challenge, okay? And of course, I know of some gung-ho uh, dads. Uh, if I get to marry, uh, I'll marry the same girl again. Wow. Puppet. <laughs> Interesting, okay? So it's always different, okay? We're all different, but we do make mistakes. We're not perfect dads, but it helps a lot to know that, okay, if you are a dad, you have done your best, you have done your best. If you have done what's right, you have done what's right. The way you raise your children, that's the best that you know how to and you can. You have done well. You have done great. Okay? Now, pray for your children. Because now they are big, they are on their own. And they will leave the nest soon. They will get married. They will start their own families. Okay? You have done all that you can. You have taught them. Now, pray for them. And say, you are on your own and God will be with you. Where I cannot be, God will be with you. He is there to watch over you, to protect you. How to be a good father? Pray for your children. When? Not now, but from young. When they're young, pray for them. When they're old, continue to pray for them. Every night before you, you sleep, when you're in bed, pray for your children. Pray for your family. In fact, I read a book about how we face spiritual challenges. And uh, every night when I, when I go to sleep, I will pray for my family, that God will cover the, my family with the blood of Jesus. I pray for all my children. I name them one by one. I pray for my wife. Okay? And that's why my wife is healthier than me. <laughs> I pray for my church. I pray for all the members, the regulars, and even the visitors, and the extended family. I pray for them. It's, it's a lifestyle. I pray for them. Lord, cover them with your blood. Those who are not safe, save them. I pray for them. Why? Because sometimes, unknowingly, when we are asleep, or sometimes when we are not careful, uh, the, the enemy, who is a spiritual enemy, he comes and he attacks us. He diverts our attention. So we need to be aware of the fact that the enemy that we face is a spiritual enemy, and he is very wicked, but God is greater. When we pray for the covering of God over our loved ones, our children, our family, okay, and the church, God covers them and they are blessed, blessed, blessed. And that's why we believe in prayer, okay? Number, how to be a good father? Pray for your children, pray for them, and they will do well. They will because of God's uh, blessing. Number nine, how to be a good father? Be a positive role model. Role model, okay? Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Okay? You are a role model of that. You are a role model for your children. Whether you like it or not, whether you are aware or not, okay? whether you are good or a bad dad or not, it doesn't matter. Your children have got only one model, and you are the model in the house. You are the man of the house. You are the head of the house. You are their model. And they will model their lives after you. Why? Because accordingly, medical science, they have inherited your your characteristics, your DNA, your DNA is in them. Okay. Uh, when, you, when you want to know whether, if, if out of blue, someone comes to the door and says, this is your son, you get a shock. Since when I got a son out there? The best way to test, I'm just saying to you, huh? the best way to test is to do a DNA test. And the DNA, if it's, if it's, if it's matching 99.9%, okay, the chances are, somewhere along the line, you have, you have done something that you shouldn't be, and he has... You know, so, so here, 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 is, uh, here is a trace of, uh, of the evidence coming back to you. Okay? I hope not for you. Okay? But I'm, I'm trying to ask you, to you what is DNA. Okay? Your children, your daughters, your son, they will share your DNA. It's the same. Okay? Cannot escape. The DNA is very clear. And this, uh, the DNA they will also lead to uh, characteristics, attitudes, values. It, it, it's transmitted. Okay? If you like art, your children are probably are very artistic. If you like music, your children also may also end up being good musicians themselves. Okay? If you like sports, your children also probably along the line, they like sports. If you are a good cook, whatever you are, your talents is transmitted, is passed on. It's called DNA. Okay? Characteristics. Okay? So whether you know it or not, whether you meet or not, okay, you are influencing your children for the better. And not only your children, but your children's children, your grandchildren also share that DNA down the line. Uh, it's in the blood. It goes down the system. Okay? And so if you are great today, remember your greatness passed down to your children and to your children's children, your grandchildren. Okay? So be who you are. Be a good man in God. Okay? You are a role model, whether you like it or not. Be a good role model as a father. Number nine. Number ten and the last one. Okay? Prepare your children. This is the hardest one. All parents will face this. Proverbs 23, verse 24, it says, The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice, and he who begets a wise son will be glad in him. You are preparing your children to leave home in the future. Now, don't cry now. Don't wipe your tears. Sooner or later, your children will grow up. 
and they will become independent. Whether you like it or not, the faster they become independent, the better, right? Okay, don't say no lah. I don't want to teach my son a lot of things or my daughter a lot of things. Why? Because I don't want my daughter and my son uh, to know too much. Uh, and then uh, they leave the house. How? Then uh, I face my wife every day and she face me. Uh, we will be so lonely without them. No lah. That shouldn't be the way. Okay? Learn to train your son and your, and your daughter to be independent. Why? Because one day you're preparing for the future. One day they will leave the house. Pray and make sure that they get good husbands, good wives. In fact, uh, a lot of dads and moms are like that. They will tell their dad, they tell their son and daughter, okay, it's all right, go out there, look for all the good guys. There are a lot out there. Okay. No fish <coughs> is the same. But make sure you, number one, condition number one, make sure he's a Christian or she's a Christian. Number two, bring him home or bring her home. Have a meal with us. We want to check her out or check him out. Okay. And if it doesn't work out, okay, I'll go to the storeroom and get my shotgun out. <laughs> okay. There are a lot of rules there, right? Okay. So whether there's a shotgun or no shotgun, dad and mom will be observing on the sidelines. But if the guy and the, and the, and the girl that your, your son and your daughter is dating, is, he's a good guy, or even if he's not half as good as you expect, it's not you, okay? it's them. They like that guy, they like that, that girl. Okay. Even though they, they are not up to your expectation or they are half... Uh, not even half of what you expect of them, give, give them a chance. Give them a chance, as long as they are safe. And sometimes because we are so insistent in our ways, you are not the one getting married to them. Because we are so insistent in our ways and we set so hard rules for our children, there are kind of time when your children are so old and they are still in the house and they are not married. Who is to be blamed? Okay. But of course, don't rush your children. Okay. They are not even 21 yet. They are 15, 16, pushing 17. And you're saying, get out there. Find someone. Find a rich man. Find a rich wife. That's too much. Okay? But if they are in the house and they're not married yet, it's probably your rules are too hard, too tough. Okay? So learn to be flexible. Okay? You are preparing your children to leave home in the future. Someday they will take what they have learned from you and will begin to apply it in their own home. And so if you have been a good dad, a good, a good mom, whatever, you're, you're a good parent, your children will set up home on their own and they also love their family and their children and they will give their best to their family and their children just like you have done so for them. This is something that tra- is transmitted. And uh, how long is the time period? You've got approximately about 18 years to get your children ready, your son and your daughter. For some, it's 21 years old. For some, perhaps it's earlier, earlier 15 I don't know about the Indian culture, but a lot of the Indians, uh, when the children are young or so, uh, they already match make their children. <laughs> too young, too young. The Muslims, the age even go lower. Too young. Okay? When they are babies, uh, okay, neighbor and neighbor bring the babies. Uh, this is my, my son. Oh, that's your daughter. Engage. <laughs> okay. Say hello to your bride-to-be. Unga, aga, unga. They can't tell the difference. And so, as your son and daughter grow up, let them explore and like who they like. Let them go out on dates. When you go out on dates with someone, it doesn't mean that you're confirmed. Dates is a time to explore, to know whether that person that you're dating is the person that you, you're going to end up with as a partner for life. Okay? It's okay if you're dating and you know that guy or that girl is not the right one. It's okay to say no. Love and marriage is never an obligation. It's never a duty. Okay? We are very uh, pastoral. We are very Christian-like. You know, as a Christian, when you start to date a girl or a guy, we feel very obligated and duty-like. Oh, yeah, I don't want to break a heart, so never mind, I'll marry her. And all through life, uh, you'll be suffering. suffering you know. Why? Because I'm a good Christian. Ma. I don't want to break a heart. Ma. I don't want to make her cry. Ma. So even though she's not the right one, but still uh, as a Christian, I got the grace of God to marry her and be with her. You will suffer. Please, please, please. Okay. Marry out of love. No. <laughs> Did I hit some, something? Marry out of love and never, never marry out of obligation and duty. Amen? All the guys and all the girls who are here. Okay? Never marry out of duty and obligation. Marry out of love. If your relationship is built on love, it will last through the test of time. Okay? And so your children are going to uh, be leaving the house. You've got about approximately 18 years, 21 years to prepare them. And nowadays, times have changed. During our time, okay, Pastor Stella and I, during our time, before we left Bible school, we want to make sure that the issue is settled. The contract is sealed. Okay? Even before our time earlier, my parents, okay, 
Uh, I used to talk to my dad and my mom. Okay, girls, if you are not if you are not uh, married by 21, by the time you reach 22, 23, you are already an old maid. During the olden days, okay. So even in the early teens, we are already starting to match in those days. My dad and my mom's time, but nowadays times have changed. You look around, there are still a lot of ladies who are 30 plus, pushing 40. They are still walking around. They are still single. There are a lot of guys who are pushing 50. They are still single, walking around. What happened? It's a merry-go-round. The world has gone wrong. No, no. Times have changed. Career, politics, the economy of the world, the maturity level of people, the challenges, the struggles in life has somehow affected the, the system. And a lot of men and women do not see marriage and relationship as a priority. There, there was a time a lot of men and women, they jump into marriage. Why? Because it's their source of security and, and is a priority. Parents will tell, tell their children, find a good husband, rich, find a good wife, rich. And then uh, you take care of yourself and I'm free of worries. Times have changed. Nowadays, a lot of single ladies are top earning CEOs in Singapore, Malaysia. They out earn the guys. And because they are out earning the guys, they are saying, why should I be obliged to marry a guy who is earning less than me and I end up taking care of him? Is it true? Some of the top, top management uh, posts in the, in the world now is run by women who are CEOs. And what happened to the guys? The guys are lagging behind. Okay? And so times have changed. So the concept of marriage is different. It will evolve. But when you marry, it doesn't matter what age you get married, but when you marry, make sure you marry in love. And by the way, another reason why you should, you should marry, if you want to have children, you should marry when you're young. At 40 plus, 50 plus, probably you have to adopt kids. At 40 plus, 50 plus, uh, unless you have the faith of Abraham, okay? You might end up with children who are not what you, ex- they ex- you expect them to be. Okay? The risk of getting Mongolite children are higher at an older age when you have children. Medical science. Okay? And so, it depends on your needs. It depends on what is expected of you. But never be obliged or forced into a marriage. So your children, prepare them for life away from you. Uh, that, that's what your role is as a father. If you have not spent your time preparing your children for the future, especially so to prepare them to meet God, okay, you have failed as a father. Besides preparing them to leave home and get married and set up their homes later, another important thing is this, as a dad, okay, you are supposed to expose them to God. Make sure your children are safe. Okay, you may be safe, your wife is safe, but your children may not be safe. If you've got parents who are safe, they go to church every Sunday, but the children do not go to church. Now, I understand children should not be forced to go to church. But at least while they are with you, before they leave home, you need to expose them to eternity, eternal destiny. Make sure they know God. Share with them. We know God. We love God. Mom and I. What about you, our beloved children? Okay? You need God. Share with them. And if they respect you, you are, you are dear to them as dad and mom. They also honor you and they also give their lives to Jesus. To the, to the best father up there, Heavenly Father. And when you, as a dad, you have led them into faith in God, you have done well as a, as a, as a, as a father. God did not give you children to, to prepare a doctor, an engineer, or a lawyer. If your children are up to be doctors, engineers, or lawyers, great. Every young kid uh, in primary school, one, standard one, uh, the teacher will ask, okay, what do you want to be? Write it down. One, two, and three, your best choice. Every young kid, seven years old, standard one, their response slip when they return it back to the teacher. Number one, doctor. Number two, engineer. Number three, lawyer. You never find someone who's a kid at standard one. Huh? First choice, fireman. Second choice, ice cream seller. <laughs> Third choice, nasi lemak man. Right? Okay. My son, okay, I was hoping that he would write first choice, pastor. No, he didn't put pastor. He put down there, fireman. Yeah. So, very rare. But it tells me he's very down to it. Okay? And so those pictures of lawyer, doctor, engineer are all pictures of uh, success la, and it's high achiever. La. Don't put pressure on your children. Let them be who they want to be. Okay? So God did not give your children to prepare a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer. If they end up that way, you've got a financial resource to, to, to support them and they will become doctors and engineers and, and lawyers and if they've got the brains... Great. 
But rather, I believe God gave you children uh, as a Christian parent so that you can prepare them for eternity. That's the difference. Okay? Your children must find God through you. That's why God gave you children, because you are, you are, you are a godly parent. Okay? You can't choose the eternal path that your children will take, but at least you can influence them towards eternity, to know God. Okay? And so children will decide for themselves the, the path that they will take in the future, but you are the great influencer in their life as a, as a dad, as a mom. Okay. How to be a good father? Number 10, prepare your children for eternity. So, as I bring the message to a quick close, it's never easy to be a good dad. Anyone can be a dad. But the best dads are dads who know God and they have got God on their side. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Okay. Just before I close in prayer, some of you may have needs, dads, moms, even if you're not married, you've got, you got needs in your life. If you would just quickly stand to your feet and come to the front, let me just spend a moment with you in prayer. At least five minutes, we'll pray for you. Those of you who have needs, please come. I'll pray for you. And then we'll close in prayer. The altar is open. If you have needs, please come. I'll pray with you and for you. We've got a wonderful God, a good God. Come on. Those of you with needs, we'll pray for you. Anyone? You got needs? Stand to your feet. Come. Start praying, huh? All right. Thank you so much, Pastor Kelly. That was such a moving uh, testimony. Nothing is impossible with God, amen? That the God who can turn things around. So if you are facing an impossible situation, whatever you're going through, okay, here is the time. Come forward for prayer. Believe in the power of prayer. God answers prayer. So anyone, you have got any needs whatsoever? Hmm, God, God has answered this father's, Pastor Kelly and the wife. I didn't know they went through such a challenging time. Well, what a great testimony of victory, huh? Hallelujah. Today is victory. In Christ there is victory. So come right. Come with faith, believing, ready to receive. Hallelujah. Ready to receive prayers. Ready to receive Miracles, ready to receive healing, whatever it is. Please step up, huh? Amen. Go ahead. Go start.